doom outside. Yes, there's a fire. <laughs> big, big fire. If We're, you live in the West, you understand. Yeah, big fire, a couple big fires. And so I woke up this morning and the rising light was a much weirder orange than it should have been. Yep. So we have the Poudre Canyon fire. It's about 60 miles. It's not in, called the Poudre Canyon. What is it called? It begins with a C. It's, it was the same area that burned a few years ago, isn't it? No. I don't know, the last... <laughs> we fail. Well, I don't know. The last time it was orange like this and we had fires like this was the same summer that I sold that SKX 399 and also um, the song um, somebody I used to know was, that was, was super hot. That was, no, that was Over Horse Tooth. That was the fire over horse tooth, right? That's not where it is right now. It's no, I understand that. Lakes. I'm talking about the last time we had like orange light and smoke. Oh, I over. thought you meant that's where the fire was. Mm -mm. Oh. By Red Feather Lake. So if you were heading up to Red Feather Lakes this weekend, you won't be able you to. You won't be able to. I'm sorry. <laughs> mm. And then there's another fire by. Glenwood Springs, which we went to last year, and it was pretty, and now it's going to be burned. Yeah, we were up there, and we're like, man, this is a beautiful little mountain town. Maybe we should think about moving up here. And then we looked at the price of houses, and we're like, no. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, so we decided not to. And lots of people from, I, there were lots of rude people, and I asked um, the lobby person at the hotel room, I was like, what's with everybody being so rude? Oh, they're from Denver. I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome. Oh, let's see. Do I have this in the right place? No, I think that's better. There you go. I should have put my hair up. Should oh, I don't want people seeing my watch. Oh, oh yeah, you got Why don't we do wrist check? Okay, wrist check. I can't believe we're finally getting to it. Yeah. Okay, well, who has the better reveal? What, you have a reveal too? Sure, of course. <laughs> this is a recent... This came in in a, in a batch of watches that were all beaten up and destroyed that came in and trade for another watch. It's, um, these are really hard to find, 6309-7290. And I had to do a ton of work on this to bring it back to life. Uh, but I love the faded bezel. Look, it's faded up here, but not really down here. It's like how the ocean gets darker when you go deeper. But this one I put, I built a super 6349 movement. It's the top end of the 6309 family, movement family. So it's um, it's 25 joules, this thing. But it came out nicely. You just don't find these anymore. Anyway, trying to figure out a strap solution. Okay, so I told everybody last week that I was getting a new watch, which is sort of a grail watch, and um, because you're all guys and older than me, you probably won't think this is cool, but I don't care. I've wanted one since high school, and there, it's a baby G in pink. That's exactly what I wanted, and... And you found the listing yourself. Yep, and I know compared to what I wore last week, it's pretty lame, but I don't care. I think it's cool. Well, that's good. I'm glad somebody does. Sure. <laughs> Look at it, it, the Friday thing in the corner. That's so funny. I'm just, I'm glad. I'm so pleased to see you choose a watch for yourself that you really dig. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's it. Alrighty. Okay. Well, I'm just so pleased about your watch. Well, thank you. Anyway, but because of the fires and everything, we're both like, because <coughs> the air quality is really terrible. I don't have the questions. Oh, they're in the printer. We're just going to have a party. I can leave you and go get them. No. <laughs> I also want to, um, I don't know, there's some other stuff. Uh, so the, this lot of watches that came in from this one gentleman, um, they were all dead, uh, destroyed with acid and all kinds of other stuff. But there was some cool stuff in there, and I'm going to do a review of one of these straight out of 1998, the SNJ007 Titanium. It's too bad the name Stargate is already taken because that sure the case looks like a Stargate, but the dial is like a spork dial. So I've been calling this the Mecca Spork, but I'll have a. You haven't called it that to me. Well, I've been calling that in my head. <laughs> but anyway, the 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 thing about the is I'll do a an overdue review of this, even though these watches are apparently incredibly rare. Not that they're worth anything; you just can't find them. But I just want to talk about it. I think it's neat. What's up? Yeah, I like to know what I'm in for since I get tricked all the time. Nobody's... I looked. There isn't a single whales comment. I don't <laughs> trust you. you. I said it. See? 
<laughs> so there was a whale's comment. Oh God, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we should talk about. Nothing, just oh. getting through. Uh, Sabrina ordered new masks for herself and the kids, and then she read that they're actually not effective. Yeah, the, well, no, for Willow and Sebastian they are, but when you have something like a neck gaiter, um, it, they're, there's too many, like, the fabric is too thin. That's why you can breathe through it. And it's actually worse than no mask, because if you go, achoo, all of your droplets get broken up into a bajillion pieces, and then it goes everywhere. Yeah, and so, so it's, it's stretchy material, and I have stretchy material masks, and then I was like, oh. Okay, I have to buy new masks. Yeah, so I'm delighted with my mask because, of course, Sabrina made it for me out of old West German, like, navy pillowcases, like, that had never been used. We found them at a surplus store in Provincetown, Provincetown, Massachusetts, when before we were married. Mm -hmm. And I, I've kept them all these years, and she turned them into my mask. And I think they're a very cheerful pattern, but they do the job. Well, I didn't feel like making more masks. I'm lazy. But wear your mask. There's no such thing as a mask Nazi. Be a patriotic American and take care of everybody. People talk about, oh, it's my rights, my rights. Well, here's the thing about rights. There's no, every right comes with a responsibility on the other side of it. That's the flip side of the coin. To have a right without responsibility, that isn't freedom, that's adolescence. So you need to do the right thing for the other people in the society we live in. So... Man up and do the thing that you need to do. Or woman up. Or woman up. Human up. Human up. American up. Yes. And do the do the thing that you need to do. Yes. Remember. Responsibility. And I'm sure us saying that's gonna upset people, but I don't care. Because you know what? I want this pandemic over with so my kids can go to school and I don't have to be a teacher and a business owner and another teacher for two kids and I want the teachers to be able to safely do their jobs and I don't want people to die. <laughs> I, I don't I don't get it. This seems really simple to me. Like I read about a lady yesterday who was gonna be catching her connecting flight through Arizona and she was gonna get on the plane and they were like, You need to wear a mask, it's the airline policy and she physically assaulted. This 47-year-old woman physically assaulted the gate agent. So, all because, so, instead of catching her connecting flight, she actually ended up committing felony assault and getting arrested, all because she wouldn't wear a mask. Or I read one that this 17-year-old um, girl was a hostess at Chili's and 11 women came in to um, eat and they wanted to have a table together but there couldn't be more than six people to a table and the hostess told them that and they beat the crap out of her and ripped off her fake nails and then they sped away and as far as I know they didn't catch them. And then of course there's also that Georgia high school I don't know if you saw it as a viral Everybody's picture. Seen it. Well the thing is is that they that kid that took that picture he was suspended. She, she was suspended then they're back but that school now has 36 cases of coronavirus and thousands of people around that school are quarantined. So if they'd worn masks, maybe that wouldn't be happening. No, but my freedoms. And if you get upset about us talking about this, I, sorry, I don't care. No, I don't care either. If you're the kind of person who... It's not a political issue. This isn't a political issue. And the fact that anybody's treating it as a political issue is just silly. This is not a political issue. It's a public health issue. Okay, so enough ranting about masks. <laughs> <laughs> now we have to be chipper again. <laughs> well, you know, it's, the stuff is simple. It's not hard. Okay, we said we we're going to stop. We're stopping. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hi, Spencer and Sabrina. I can't believe I forgot to ask a question for Q&A number 100. Well, here's a question I have been wanting to ask you and other notable watchmakers. So other people listen to the question. At what point does a watch repaired with donor parts from the same movement or movements family become a Franken watch? Without new old stock service parts or donor parts, that watch would never run again, and it certainly would never be an all original example again. Thanks in advance for the answer, and keep up the great videos, Mr. James Duffy of the Sandwich Time Channel. Glad to see a question from you, Mr. James Duffy of the Sandwich Time Channel. Uh, always nice to know that you're around and kicking. Um, that's a your question, that's, a, that's that old ship of Theseus thing where how much of it, you know, you have your grandfather's axe and, you know, your grandfather replaced the handle and your father replaced the head and now you have it and it was your father's and your grandfather's axe, but it wasn't actually anything of your grandfather's original axe. Is it still your grandfather's axe? Um, I don't know. 
I think it's an interesting question. I never worried about it too much. Maybe now, maybe it's the opinion of the wearer. Maybe, but like this. Okay, this watch. This is a Franken. I built this thing out of multiple parts, but a number of the original parts of that watch are still here. But I would call this a Franken if. Anything that, in my mind that falls under the heading of repair, like you have to repair something, you have to repair a part, you have to replace a part, um, you know, this, that the hands are bad, the, the balance is bad, the, the crystal is worn, the seals are bad. I mean, in theory, if you're going to be really nuts about it, you, um, if you, if you go into a, a watch that's never been opened and you change the seals, clean the seals up and put a new crystal in it, it's no longer original, but they're maintenance items. So... I mean, and Seiko sells replacement movements. Like, there's a gentleman in South Africa who has a, a 7C golden tuna, and it's having problems with the date change. Uh, and he can't find any service down there at all. Uh, and so I recommended um, that he simply replace the movement. You can get them from Perrin in Canada. They're actually not terribly expensive. And I gave that link to him, and he's going to go ahead. He's the original owner of the watch. He's going to swap the movement out because the old movement is having problems. So there's that question again. Is it still his watch? Because it's a new movement inside, but everything on the outside is original. And I would say because it's a maintenance item, it's the same watch. Who cares? Um, I don't know. I think it always gets back to intent. Um, oh, we're going over that again? You know, well, it's... The I'm, last time we talked about this, you, like, carried on for a while. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. The thing is, everything is about... Intrinsically, none of it means anything. I mean, it's all in the judgment of the, of the, of the owner. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. It's an interesting philosophical question. Practically, I don't think it has much bearing on anything, and it's all maintenance items, to my mind. Okay. Okay. Andrew W., congratulations on your 100th mail call, guys. Thanks for the advice on DS9. It certainly hits the ground running compared to TNG. I actually watched the episode you mentioned yesterday, past tense, as I like watching the two-parters. The irony of it, given the current situation, wasn't lost on me either. Thanks also for the heads up on the Voyager episode. Cheers. Yeah. Voyager had some good stuff. It got better as it as the seasons went on, but yeah, that that particular episode, that DS Nine two parter, pretty prescient right now. Yes, and it seemed like I don't know a dystopian, crazy idea twenty years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Lahu. all sixty three twos. What? What? Oh, he's talking about 6139-6032, which is, a, which is one of the JDM speed timer models. It's the Coke one. There's 6031, 60... I've never seen 60, one in my life. Oh, I've owned a good number of them. You would, you would recognize them if yeah. you saw them. Okay, so they all have the 21 Joule variant, right? Or do some of them have 17 Joules? They would all have the 21 Joule variant. Uh, they should, I believe... I think the red text 21 jewels. Yeah, they probably would. They're definitely 21. They might all have the red text, but I don't, I'm not sure. Okay. Before I read this, I've never read or watched Lord of the Rings, so I have no idea how to pronounce <laughs> well, it. If I, the, I've tried to read it so many times and then I fall asleep. Smeagol. Smeagol? Smeagol. All right. From I Ryan think. Walters. <laughs> You've seen the movies. Of course. I've, and I've, I've read the books I know, every year you, since I was like eight. You haven't read them in forever. I don't need to read them anymore. I've read them so many times. Well, I forgot what I was going to say. Go to hell? I don't know. <laughs> Ryan Walters. I'm so excited for my 7548 watches to arrive. Thank you, Spencer. I'm glad your inner Smeagol won over your Gollum. Anyone else think that Sabrina's watch box has some ridiculous gems in it? How about a state of the collection for both Spencer and Sabrina? Mine hasn't really changed since the last time we did that, like, years ago. No, you've added things, but you still only wear a few watches. Yeah. I'll be curious to see how much wrist time this one gets. <laughs> I, I, You should wear whatever you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, Smeagol and Gollum. I guess one of the things, there are lots of things. John Milton, the author of Paradise Lost, one of the things that he talked about, um, God, I just almost went on a, a, a total tear and then I completely forgot my point. <laughs> well, because there's so many things that John Milton said. Oh, John Milton. Okay, one of the things, one of the things he did say, I believe in his uh, book on philosophy, Areopagitica, um, is that one can take lessons from any situation 
good lesson or bad lesson from the same situation, depending on how you look at things. And so that's one of the, you know, it's sort of a philosophical thing to sort of, to version to say, you know, look on the bright side of stuff, glass half full, that kind of thing. One of the great things, uh, lessons that I took from Lord of the Rings that I think is important was Tolkien's idea about the sort of the salvageability of an individual, even one who is really sort of twisted and poisoned by evil. And so that was the whole idea about, you know, it's a very, pardon me, it's a very Catholic idea to, for, for Frodo to be able to try to reach the buried remnants of Smeagol inside the, the wreck of the creature golem. And so, you know, you could still reach that. So I always think that, you know, always, that's one of my problems. That's why I am always trying to reach people trying to reach the rational, rational person in there. Yeah, and then you try to reach the rationale of my family of Catholics, and that doesn't work. I can't help your family. <laughs> Nothing I can do with your family. Anyway, so yes, I looked, I looked at your watch, man, I opened that box, and I was like, because I found that for you on, from Japan, and I mean, I don't like to toot my own horn, but I, you know, pictures never quite do it justice, but I could tell that was going to be a nice one. But when I opened the box, I was like, but, you know, you got to be good. Master yourself every day. As my father used to say, every day we are tested. Okay. I'm trying to think how I was tested today. Every day we're tested. You were tested with your patience with the kids, with your watch? Yeah, my watch went missing. Somebody stole it and then conveniently put it under the couch after I looked there 20 times. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> RC1776. I have a 7548 orange on a Z199, all original and still golden. Yeah, it's nice. Also wearing my fresh blue jumbo right now, and it's just awesome. So thanks for the service, Spencer. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad the jumbo's working for you. Yeah, man. Um, I have, uh, I, I have a 7548 7000 on a on an original Z199 and it's, they're just, it's just such a great combination. But I have to tell you, I think the thing is with the orange watches is I think I've only seen the 7548700 H's. The thing with the H's is they don't have the gold tone. They only have the orange dial versus, I believe that's the case. Whereas the C's have the gold tone and man, seeing that unfaded insert was just like super cool. Okay. So it's not going to happen, but at some point it might. Okay. D Mitch 22. Gray call on the older BMW, Spencer. My favorite bike is a 1976 R90 RS that I've had since 1981. I too have always been under the assumption that the blue inserts were made by Dyne. Hmm. Love how they look. Well, thank you. Uh, if you remember where you heard that, let me know. Because um, I, I, I want to know if that's true or not. As for old BMWs, yeah. Man, I loved them. When I was a... Uh, when I was a teen, uh, I went to I, I got an, my first BMW, which was a R, which was an R fifty, slash five, and it, we, the only motorcycle shop in town in those days was the really 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 old school Harley dealership. It's, it still exists. It's called a Classic Touch. It's built in an ancient brick like like green elevator thing on the north side of town, but they had. This huge, the entire, the entire back of this place, like the whole building is probably from the late 1800s. Everything was just packed with motorcycles and they had a big, big, big elevator for moving grain or large loads of stuff. And I remember looking into the shaft of that thing, which went into the basement and there, all these motorcycles that have just been sitting there forever, that they've been sitting there for so long, they were all gray with dust, but one of them was, um, was some beautiful swoopy 40s BMW with the external frame around the outside. Oh, it was really beautiful. That was love at first sight. I wonder if it's still there. What? I don't care. She doesn't care. I don't care. I wasn't listening. <laughs> Chrono Craze, congrats on 10K and 100. May you have another 100 in 10K. Thank you. That'd be crazy. Mm. Well, the 10K. I don't know. The Friday videos kind of have it. <laughs> I guess so. Maybe a stupid question. There are no stupid questions. 
but here it is. For a mechanical chronograph, save that of a flyback chronograph. Will it damage the movement if you hit the chronograph reset button before you stop the chronograph? Is it even possible to do so, or the chronograph must be stopped before the reset button will work? For a mechanical chronograph, not talking about a flyback. Okay, so we're putting flyback chronographs to the side. The way that mechanical, yes, it would be a danger to try to reset while the, a mechanical chronograph that isn't a flyback is running. But watches like that, where you would danger, be putting the watch in danger, they basically have a lockout function, lockout tag out, where if the chronograph is running, you have other stops are in place to make it so that you cannot reset it. Um, in a 6139 and a 6138, you have a pillar wheel and it clicks around. And when it clicks around, the, the pillars are in the way of like the, the tip of the, the hammer and um, all, and also the, the, the operating levers that are operating the clutch. So you, you couldn't reset it even if you tried. So they they're worried about that, but uh, you know, it's a fine question. It's not one that anybody's ever asked. Have you tried to do it? No, God, no. Why would I do that? I don't know. It just wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. I mean, that's the thing is I can tell. Sometimes, like, okay, I get a 6139 or something in. And I'm like, I want to look at it. I want to see if the chronograph hand is working. And I'll move it a little bit, right? And then if, this, if the sweep doesn't start moving, then I try to reset it. And if it won't reset, doesn't do anything, I'm like, oh, well, the chronograph must be running. I'm going to stop and start it, and I confirm and go from there. Do you need a nap? I always need a nap. It's this light. No, I, every week they hear me complain about being tired. What? Hmm? What? Oh, I'm thinking about the uh, praying mantis. <laughs> we saw a brown praying mantis stuck to our screen on the window. They're super cool. Okay. Tom N. Rocking my Aussie Pope today. Sabrina, you could either get a watch winder. I don't care. If you want to get a watch winder, that's your business. Oh my God, you didn't go in a rant? We haven't had this discussion in a while. <laughs> I think that watch, I jeweled the mainspring arbor, so that would probably be okay. I don't know why you'd want to do that, though. For that old Rolex, or else set a reminder to wear it in a month. It's because of the... Yeah, yeah, it does, it's not a quick set. I get one for my Speedy MK40 since it's on my wrist most days, but when it does run down, it's a bit of a pain. It's true. Spencer, I'm happy to report that the surgery to open up the lug hole of my 7017 was a success. It took 0.8 millimeter twist bit. I had to buy a bit set that goes down to 0.1 millimeter. Wow, wow. Oof, that's tiny. That's really, 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 really... I don't even know how you drill something with something that small. A question for mail call. You've said that the 6138, 6139 movements are chronographs first and watches second. What makes this so? Vertical clutch, integrated design, or something else unique to their design? Is this applicable to similar design chronographs by other makers? Thanks. Um, the last part of the question, I don't honestly know if it's applicable, but I, it's the... And again, this is only my my opinion. So here's the thing. The default setting of that chronograph, that component, the chronograph wheel that is in the heart of the 6139s and 6138s, its default state is with the clutch closed so the entire part is running. In order to stop it, you actually have to have operating levers come in to compress the clutch spring and to take that function away. So for me looking at it, their default setting the default state of the design of that watch is, in my opinion, to be a chronograph and that you have to actually remove one of its functionalities in order to make it into a regular watch, which is different than how I considered a, a Swiss chronograph, which is that it's a three-hander and then you can actuate it. And what that does is it then it connects the power, it starts pulling power from the train to run the chronograph. And so you're adding in a process versus a Seiko where you're removing one. That's, it's just my opinion. 
Julie Hill, odd indeed, but then you get fads, trends, and tastes continually change. I would have thought that a 6306 7001 would easily be premium over a 6309. Another favorite of mine is the SUS High B SCFF001 4S15, which collectors tend to overlook. See also King Seiko. I would have also thought the less collectible, the less faked, which would make more sense to check out other models. Yeah, I... God, it's so orange that my eyes are making the paper look orange. No, the paper does look orange. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's that's not your... That's not an illusion. It, it really looks orange. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't know. Lesser known models are really... There's so much that Seiko did that people don't think about. Like, I've started... I had to do... In order to bring... In order to bring this thing back which it had, the movement was destroyed, and it was a 7N36. Almost all the 7Ns you see are a 7N42, and they're very common. This is a 7N36. They're actually quite hard to find. The spacer block is a different size. There's all this stuff you have to do. So I was digging and digging and digging through all of my back boxes of old quartz movements, junk movements, and I started, I got distracted, because I'm easily distractible. And I started looking at two different quartz movements that nobody thinks about. Seiko's 7-8-XX movements and Seiko's 8-1-2-3 and 8-2-2-3 and 8-2-2-9s. They're all the same family. They're beautifully made, but nobody thinks about them. Nobody collects them. They're every bit as good as a 7-5-4-X. They even have a variable trimmer. They are fully jeweled. They have, um, they have all metal plates. They are excellent and nobody thinks about them. Um, I don't think there's very many cool models that have them, but it's like, you would think a watch like that would not be fake. I've never have seen one, but you just never know. Those fakers. But yeah, it's time to dig into some of the lesser known stuff in Seiko, because the really big stuff, like the, the what people call the Willards and the, and the Turtles, blah, blah, blah. Um, they're just, the prices are ridiculous, but Seiko made so much good stuff. The 6600 movements, the early 6200 movements, they don't have any sport models, but there's a lot of cool stuff out there that you can still have for cheap and that nobody's faking. And then you talk them up and then suddenly they'll be worth money. Maybe. Like, I mean, the world talk them up, not you. The what, like the, like the Mecca Spork? Dun, dun, I think bum. it looks more like the Stargate than the Stargate. It does. Watch. I actually pulled up pictures. Of, I was the one that said it looks like the Stargate. It's true. I was looking at it and looking at it, and looking at it. And I'm like, it's like it's like when something is really familiar, and you're like, I'm like, this reminds me of some kind of industrial design, some kind of science fiction, something. It reminds me of something. Yeah, it's too bad the Stargate name is taken because this thing is like the Spork Stargate, Stargate Spork. Mecha Spork, Mecha Stargate. I don't know. Uh, where was I? In a bit, 19. Hi, SNS 100 mail calls. Who would have thunk it? Thanks for all of them. By the way, Gonculator equals Hogan's Heroes, 1968. Now, I put that on here. A lot of people have been saying Gonculator to me recently. Did I say it in a video? You say it all the time. I do? Yes! I thought I... Did I not? I don't know where the word came from. Did well, it come from Hogan's it came Heroes? From Hogan's Heroes, which you said you used to watch when you were little. I did, I did, and my old and my older brother did too. Everybody watched Hogan's Heroes. Conculator came from Hogan's Heroes. I've been saying it my entire life. I'll have to do research on it. U2K2, Green Gunk in the Gonculator. Just a theory. There's a phenomena commonly attributed to these bumps. Zeiss. So whatever. What are you doing? I'm looking for this thing behind you, because this is going to be important for this question. These are typically <clears throat> hard bumps under the leather coverings of some of their camera backs. These bumps are caused by tiny amounts of copper in the brass of the small rivets, think copper roofs. This growth corrosion has a look and consistency of a jade green waxy lump blob. Uh, yeah, and, and about that, it's the same stuff as the whale snot that you see on on uh, when watches Seikos get water in them because the copper gets pulled out of the the alloy, especially of the winding weights. And it literally, it's this shiny, blobby, bubbly stuff. Why is it whale snot? People call it whale snot. That's what they call it. I think you just like the word whale. Hadn't occurred to me, but <laughs> I guess so. I do like whales. I've always liked whales. I know. 
then how do you pronounce that? Leets? Lights? Lights. Now about the lights binoculars. I do service the Trinavid models, but during the pandemic, Lycia? 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 Lycia. Whatever. Announced a permanent halt to parts support for all binoculars. So when my parts inventory runs out, I'll no longer offer binocular service. But for the extremely classic units such as yours, one of the biggest concerns is the failing and brittle vulcanite body covering age deterioration. And performing the teardown, the stuff just crumbles. An extremely labor-intensive process of making a pattern, then cutting out replacement non-OEM coverings truly adds to the bench time so as you can imagine at the current resale values of these extremely classic units they're typically not considered economical to repair fun all that said if you're okay with the almost certain covering destruction i'll extend a professional courtesy and give one of your units a go uh well here's the, here's the thing um uh what was i going to say um i've actually i've recovered binoculars before and i've had I've had pretty decent luck with it. I used to do it a lot. But, so, I understand what you're saying. Like this. This beautiful set of, these are from, gosh, these are from 1906. Uh, but I cleaned these. These are fine. They, they don't need any help. The, model, the binoculars I was talking about were these. These are Hensold Wetzlar 10 by 50 roof prisms. They're World War II and they don't have any coating on them. They have an enamel paint in 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 their in desert tan, ordnance tan, and then uh, they were taken back in and repaired and then reissued and spray painted black at that time, painted black when they were reissued. Um, the, optically they're great. They're I mean these are really they're really nice binoculars. They're really nice. Um, optically they're great, but I swear they're ever so slightly out of collimation, uh, because they just, I don't know. But this is what I was talking about. That's, that's the real deal. And you can actually see that. You can actually see, it's got the wartide code BMJ. BMJ stands for Hensold Wetzlar. You can see the stuff here. So that's what I was thinking about. I don't know. There wouldn't be much for you to do with these because, again, optically they're quite good, but there's just, there's something isn't right. Anyway. Road Gent. Hi, at 1020 of some video, you re recommend using Energizer oh. batteries. Vintage Time Australia and his Seiko Tech 7548 videos gives the opposite advice. Any comments? Well, uh, that's Adrian Selleck. We're, we know him. I mean, we talk with him all the time. I like Energizer because... Frankly, I like rabbits. <laughs> Any silver oxide battery of a major brand is fine. What did Adrian say to you? I don't know. I don't know. You he probably Duracell or Maxell. Um, I like rabbits. I do. I always like rabbits. Here's a fun fact. Well, of course, hares are not rabbits. They're a completely different species. But interesting thing about hares is that um, culturally... In England, they were always, all hares were referred to as feminine, as she. I like rabbits. I do. I've always liked rabbits. <laughs> I know, but people probably expected some, like, gigantic explanation. <laughs> I like rabbits. <laughs> I do like rabbits. Rabbits are, rabbits don't mean anyone any harm. Uh, except when they try to run in front of me when I'm running. Or when they try to take over Australia. Oh. Maybe that's why Adrian didn't recommend them. <laughs> Maybe. He's Australian. Maybe he has some kind of instinctive societal species basis for rabbit hate because of his Australianness. Um, I should ask him about, about drop bears. <laughs> I can't. Why? What? Because you're tired and you're silly. Justin Buchanan. Hello, Mr. Buchanan. <sighs> what? Uh, what? I don't know. I'm really tired. <laughs> Hi, Spencer. Sabrina, I've got a good dad watch story for you. My first son was born in March 2017, and for my first Father's Day as a dad, I decided to get myself my first real watch. I thought about trying to find an SKX 007 made the month and year my son was born somehow, but when I was when I told my dad of my plans, he told me that he had the same that same watch in a drawer somewhere that was given to him before I was born, 
by a friend of his who was a diver in the Navy, and he just gave it to me. Turns out it was a 6309-7040. When I looked up the serial number, it happened to be made in March 1977, exactly 40 years to the month before my son was born. It's been on my wrist. Sorry, I had lunch before this. Um, <laughs> It's been on my wrist most of the time and runs pretty good, but it does have some peccadillos that if I ever get a chance, I'll have you look at. Thanks again for the videos. I'd be honored to see your watch. That'd be great. At least I didn't have any pickles. It's the only reason she stays with me. I keep confusing her with silliness. Okay, I can do this. I can make it through. Okay. Rick, congrats on 110K. I get how someone already familiar with the process might be bored by you showing your tedious jewel setting method. However, there are probably more of us who don't know the process and are curious. It would be awesome if you could pass your knowledge down to your kids. Would be nice to still have people who know how to fix these things when we're gone. Well, it is nice. I mean, I actually felt bad last week. Oh, wait, I... there's more. Oh, there's more. No, well, you can carry on. I felt bad last week because at a certain point, Sebastian busted in here, which he's not supposed to do. But he he was, he's sort of becoming more of a little kid and less of a baby. And so he um, he pushed over uh, this ottoman that's here and he pushed it over by my bench and he stood up there and he was looking at what I was doing. And I was just sort of sitting there and I realized actually after a while that some time had passed. And I was working on my watch and Sebastian was sitting there asking me what I was doing. And I'm like, and I never did that with the girls. And I'm like, oh, I'm a bad father. Well, I have that picture of you I know. and little Sadie. And Sadie was like, yeah, why aren't you showing me? Well, you know, she needs to... Honey, you know how it goes. If you need something out of me, you need to come and bug me for it. Yeah, but then you're like... <laughs> <laughs> um, so She's anyway, too busy sitting in her room watching anime and looking at TikTok. Yeah, when, well, I do talk to Sadie, but then she is always talking about the things that she's doing. And Willow is... Much more determined, but she's extremely hard to keep on task. Um, Sebastian had no problem whatsoever staying focused. When Willow's older, certainly we'll try it. And maybe Sadie, when she's older, we can try it too. The, the knowledge, I will do my best to preserve what knowledge I have. <laughs> ah, there we go. Willow came out of her room and now they're fighting. Anyway, to the next part, I went through a cure phase similar to your Smith's phase in my teen years. Don't listen to them nearly as much anymore, although every few years I just need to listen to disintegration um, for a few days straight. I also got obsessed with a new order in my teens, and that never went away. My new order and other factory artist collection is a channel for my OCD. Yeah, you know, I, The Cure, I, Disintegration's a great album. Uh, I don't know, The Cure was always kind of, I like The Cure. Um, they obviously were big in our generation. Uh, they're a little, I don't know, they're not my 100% thing, but New Order. Oof. Yeah, you introduced me to New Order. New Order's great, and one of my greatest memories is when I was a... Shut up. <laughs> when I was a teenager, there used to be a, a, there was a place called Fort Ram, and it was like this bar dance club place um, for you know regular people, grown-ups. But when I was a teen, on Sundays, they had a thing called they had a thing called minor night, so like high school kids could go and they didn't serve alcohol or anything else like this for kids. And uh, I was there and they played really progressive music and I was there when the local radio station which ran that minor night thing, they had the DJs, um, they had literally gotten their physical copy of that new New Order song uh, album. And there was like, this is brand new song, New Order just came on and they spun it the very first time I ever heard um, Blue Monday was was live in that club, and I can tell you, it was a shock to everybody. Instant hit, literally instant hit. I've never, never seen it, anything like it before. The first time, how, how many times you people out there were? Do you remember the first time you ever heard a song that later became a gigantic hit? And uh, that's that's my story. I can still remember it. I know exactly where I, I was. I just love that you're like telling the story, and they're like. Bah! I'm like, uh. <laughs> okay. 
James Hewlett. I have a 4006 Bellmatic that has a very clean movement. Recently, it has been stopping randomly. The hands aren't rubbing on the glass. The mainspring appears to be holding energy fine. The escape wheel seems to have some sort of friction somewhere. I am noticing the escape wheel isn't snapping into the entry pallet position with the fork as firmly as it should. Would this be something as simple as sending it in for a full cleaning? The watch worked well and stopped suddenly. I halfway expect a hair to have gotten stuck in the movement. Okay, well, the first question is, do you know the service history? Are the hands touching? Like, are they running into each other? Uh, you would have to see if they're... I mean, you'd have to set the hands to, to sort of look at them to see if they've got clearance. But what he's talking about, if the, if the train is dragging to the point that the escape wheel is not snapping into the next position on the pallet fork stones, then there is... something is draining the power. Did you drop it recently? Is it magnetized? Um, you, you don't, do you know the service history? Um, do you have, well, the big question is if you had a time grapher and you had it running, that would tell you everything you need to know because the numbers don't lie and it would tell you exactly what the issue is. But when a watch, when a Seiko's love to run, it takes a, something seriously, seriously wrong for a Seiko to not run. So based on what you're telling me, I would put that watch to one side until it can be looked at because it wants to run, Seikos want to run. Um, they're built a little loose, specifically so that they will keep, keep, keep running um, even when they've run out of lubrication. Uh, so I would put it to one side and uh, take it to somebody who has a time grapher or give it to somebody who can service it. That's what I would do. VB, anyone know where I can find old service manuals? Is there a climber for watches? I don't know what climber is, C-L-Y-M-E-R. I don't know what that is. All the manuals, the, the manuals are not fully digitized by themselves, but almost every single entry for every single movement has been digitized separately. So like if I'm, if I'm feeling, I don't know, if I don't want to go over to the shelf and dig out my physical service guides, um, I just Google, let's say this, okay, 6309. If I Google Seiko 6309a.pdf, I Google that, you will come up with numerous links, scans of the PDF of the, the servicing guide for that movement. So the internet, uh, Macaws, I think has a lot of them. Uh, they're, they're available now. Or you get lucky on eBay. Or you get lucky on eBay and buy the actual physical manuals. But those are great just because they're like, they're perfect bathroom reading. God, you're gonna say that every freaking time. But it's true. There's so much great information. What? You just repeat yourself and repeat yourself. And I'm still only, I'm in my early 50s. Can you imagine how bad it's gonna be when I'm in my 80s? <laughs> I'll have my AirPods in. I mean, Willow's already started cutting me off when I started telling stories she's heard before. Uh, As Morrissey said, stop me if you've heard this one before. I bet they're fighting, like literally physically fighting. Well, Sadie's not letting me have what? Outside. What? God, they've been home since March and they're going to do virtual learning through the virtual school and that's another year. I overslept yesterday and I, w and I woke up and Sabrina was just like, she didn't have any hair left. She ripped it all out. <laughs> and she came in to talk to me and she was completely surrounded by all the children and the dog. And she's like, and they've been on top of me since 6.30 this morning. Anyway... From Randy Allen. Hi guys, first of all, belated congratulations on reaching your 100 shows 10K view milestones. You must be doing something right. I guess. I or something terribly wrong. <laughs> Second, Spencer, I really like your Speedy Mark IV on wrist check a couple of weeks back. Those MK style cases are starting to grow on me. Does the MK4 have the Lamania, Lamania, La something, uh, 5100 caliber under the hood? Mm -hmm. I see the little airplane wings on the minute hand. If you haven't mentioned it yet, what are your thoughts on the Bonham Seiko auction fiasco? Oh, that's a, that's a totally different subject. Um, okay. Yeah, this is, um, it's Omega Cal 
1140, I believe. So yeah, it's the 5100. These are cool because they're a mix of like old school Swiss chronographs, but they also have, um, they actually have some clutches in there as well. So like with this one, when you start, the minute counter is the big hand with the wings on it. So when you click that, what you're actually doing is you are Oh, when you click this, you're releasing the operating levers, which then allow which then allow the the minute counter hand and the actual minute hand to move together. It's kind of weird, but yeah, it's 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 got that going on. Pretty cool. The last thing he was asking about was bottoms. There was this drama. Nobody tells me anything. I, I live in a bubble anyway. I, what is it? I don't know what happened. There's this auction house named Bonhams. I don't know if they're legitimate or what they were. It seems like it was in Hong Kong. And last week, everybody was all in a dizzy, a tizzy because they were going to have an auction of all these different Seiko watches, including a 6215-7000. And I was, you may remember, you were down here and I was looking at the listings because somebody said, hey man, what do you think about this thing? Um, in fact, it was Julie. Julie Hill told me about it. And so I was looking at the listings and I'm like, that's the wrong bracelet. I'm like, that's got a fake dial. And I was looking at this stuff. I'm like, that's just really weird. And it didn't say anything in descriptions about it. But then um, it turns out that it was already this huge emerging crisis. And Hodinkee had been talking about it, I believe. And Bonhams took down all the listings because there were so many fake watches in there. Um, one of the examples, it's either Hodinkee or Worn and Wound, though. It's very interesting to me. One of the examples, one of their fakes, was a 6105-8000 um, that had what, to my eyes, were clearly um, a service dial and handset. Specifically, the handset hour and minute hands were 6139 hands, which is something that Seiko did a lot. They were a standard sub during service, and they would replace the dials with service dials with a short sweep, and they didn't have the 6105 hour and minute hands anymore, so they would use the 6139s. I think that one actually is quite interesting. The most interesting thing, it was that case was really, really early, March 1968. Um, in fact, I mean, I have my own March 1968 that also has service dial and hands in it. Mine was the second earliest 6105-8000 ever known than I have ever known of. Now it's the third. That other one at Bonhams, that's that's now the second oldest one ever known. And I would dearly love to actually get my hands on that watch. I would. So even when it comes to junk, there's treasure. I guess the answer is a lot of people, you got to go to people who know what they're talking about and always be worried that something's too good to be true. What? Them. It's nothing I can do about it. I know. It. Unless you want to go back in time. <laughs> no, I, I have to go upstairs and mediate the situation and calm Willow down. Spinnick 8. Hi, Spencer. Hopefully I'll get this question in time for Friday's mail call. You in did. a recent video, you showed a 6105 which you serviced. The difference between the dial, indices, and hands were incredible after your cleaning. Could you explain your process for this, please? I'm trying to remember which one it was. If you were talking about one where I lightened the loom, that is my, that is a, a, a chemical compound that I uh, that I made up that was sort of a holy grail thing that will lighten blackened, nasty, damaged loom. It does work. Um, I'm not sure though that that's the specific. If I'm not sure which exact watch you're talking about because I do a lot of watches, so. <laughs> Um, I don't know. It, that, it's my Revital Loom, uh, which, and it's still hit or miss. It's still something I'm working on. Sometimes it works great. Sometimes it works great. And other times it's like, it just, everything goes sideways. And so it's not perfected. And honestly, these days, because I'm such a flibberty gibbet, unless I actually need it, I forget that I've invented it. And then I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I've got that stuff I made. And then I'll use that. I just, I don't have a brain in the fight anymore. I don't. Anyway, so happy from, happy hello from Firetown, yeah, USA. Firetown. <laughs> Where that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this.
I hope you enjoyed this stuff. <laughs> I hope you have a quiet and peaceful weekend, not surrounded by screaming children and having the entire sky obscured by orange clouds. Is she angry or is she, ha she's like screaming and laughing like a crazy person and running and. I don't know. I don't know, I have no idea. I have no idea. Okay, we, we're just prolonging this. We have to face the music. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>